What up, y'all? This is your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mellon. You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Friday, January 8th, 2016, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at the Enter Report or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeartRadio or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Taylor Swift, Kevin Hart, Melissa McCarthy, The Big Bang Theory, Outlander, Grey's Anatomy, and Furious 7 each won multiple trophies at Wednesday's People's Choice Awards ceremony in Los Angeles. Swift won the prize for favorite female artist and pop artist, while Hart picked up the statues for favorite cable TV actor and comedic movie actor. McCarthy went home with the awards for favorite comedic movie actress and favorite comedic TV actress. The Big Bang Theory was named favorite TV show and network TV comedy, and it started Jim Parsons was deemed favorite comedic TV actor. The favorite cable TV comedy prize went to It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Outlander earned the accolades for favorite cable sci-fi fantasy show and for favorite sci-fi fantasy TV actors for its leading lady, Katerina Baffey. And Grey's Anatomy garnered the honors for favorite network TV drama and favorite dramatic TV actors for Ellen Pompeo. Taylor Kinney earned the favorite dramatic TV actor title. The favorite network TV sci-fi fantasy show honored was presented to Beauty and the Beast, and the favorite sci-fi fantasy TV actor statuette went to Jensen Ackles. Pretty Little Liars was chosen as favorite cable TV drama, and Homeland as favorite premium cable TV show. Dwayne Johnson and Kristen Bell were elected favorite premium cable TV actor and actress. Sasha Alexander was named favorite cable TV actress, and Orange is the New Black won for favorite streaming show. The Voice was voted favorite competition show. Ellen DeGeneres favorite daytime talk show host. Jimmy Fallon favorite late night talk show host and the talk favorite talk show hosting team. Furious 7 scored the prizes for favorite movie and favorite action movie, while Chris Hemsworth was voted favorite action movie actor and Shailen Woodley as favorite action movie actress. Channing Tatum won the award for favorite movie actor and Sandra Bullock the trophy for favorite movie actress. The Martian was declared favorite drama movie and Johnny Depp and Dakota Johnson favorite dramatic movie actor and actress respectfully. Pitch Perfect 2 won for favorite comedic movie. Minions earned the favorite family movie title and Taken 3 was voted favorite thriller. Ed Sheeran was named favorite male artist and Shawn Mendes favorite breakout artist while Megan Trainor won for favorite album for title and Justin Bieber for favorite song for What Do You Mean. Fifth Harmony won for favorite group. Actress and comedian Jane Lynch hosted the fan voted prize presentation at the Microsoft Theater. The ceremony aired on CBS. In a related story, Vin Diesel finished his acceptance speech at Wednesday's People's Choice Award with a touching tribute to his late friend and Fury 7 co-star Paul Walker. Walker died in a 2013 car wreck during a break from shooting the movie, which was eventually finished and went on to become one of the biggest blockbusters of 2015. It earned the People's Choice accolades for favorite action movie and favorite movie. Diesel said, I always said I'm not going to get emotional about winning these awards, and I was cool when I was still sitting in my seat, and they handed me two Two awards, one for favorite action movie and one for favorite film. You all thought this was your favorite film of the year. So I think of the movie's characters, Dom and Brian, and I start to think of Paul. It was a labor of love. My only message to you is you would be amazed at how much you can do with love, and you'd be amazed at how powerful a force that is. When we didn't want to come back to filming, when the tragedy was too heavy, it was the love of everyone combined that saw us through to the end, and now I am standing with all of you telling me that this was your favorite film of the year. That means the world to me. He concluded his time on the stage at the Microsoft Theater by singing a few lines from See You Again, the meaningful song from Furious 7, which includes the lyrics, It's been a long day without you, my friend, but I tell you all about it when I see you again. People's Choice Awards host Jane Lynch got big laughs when she announced actor and comedian Thomas Lennon had won an honorary prize, then corrected herself and said he was, in fact, the the runner-up. Lynch said as the beauty queen appeared on stage wearing a Miss People's Choice sash, waving and smiling, I'm sorry I have to apologize, the winner is Miss Columbia, before handing Lennon a bouquet of flowers and snatching the statuette out of his hands as Lennon looked horrified. Lynch added, it's my fault, I didn't bother to come to dress rehearsal, man, I just read the card wrong, I am so sorry. The bit was a nod to Miss Universe's pageant MC Steve Harvey's infamous error. In announcing Miss Columbia, Adriana Gutierrez had won the competition when she was actually the runner-up, 
and Miss Philippines, Pia R- Rutzbach, had earned the top title. The fan-voted People's Choice Award Gala took place at the Microsoft Theater in Los Angeles and aired live on CBS. Britney Spears has now explained why she missed in a- she was missing in action during the People's Choice Awards. Spears was noticeably absent from the fan-voted award show Wednesday when she was previously confirmed to attend the annual event and after she didn't come to the stage after winning the award for favorite social media celebrity. The pop star beat out fellow celebrity heavyweights Beyonce, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Anna Kendrick, and Taylor Swift for the honor, all of whom were not in attendance either. Spears then thanked fans for voting for her across her social media account Accounts and explain how an illness kept her away from the event. Uh, the 34 year old shared in a note posted to Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram I wish I could have been at the People's Choice Awards tonight, but I started feeling sick. Thank you so much for voting me favorite social media celebrity. This is dedicated to my fans, the Britney Army. Without you, this would not be possible. She concluded by saying, I love that I can share my world with you and that you are so supportive of me. Remember to be kind online and spread love. Hashtag thank you. Bill Cosby will not face charges on two separate allegations in Los Angeles, the L.A. District Attorney said Wednesday. The District Attorney said in a, com- in a combination of not enough evidence and too much lost time kept them from making strong cases. One allegation dates back to 1965 and the second from 2008 at the Playboy Mansion. The District Attorney's report stated, after evaluating all potential charges, there is insufficient evidence to prove these crimes beyond a reasonable doubt. As for the 50-year-old case, the DA's report stated, filing the crime of forcible rape is barred by the statute of limitations, and as such, any consideration of a criminal filing is prohibited by law. Cosby's lawyers were pleased with the outcome. Chris Tabak, one of Cosby's lawyers, said in a statement, we are satisfied that the Los Angeles DA's office fully and fairly evaluated all the facts and evidence and came to the right decision. Although neither accusers identified, model Chloe Goins filed a civil suit against Cosby in an L.A. federal court on allegations he sexually assaulted her at the Playboy Mansion in 2008 when she was 18 years old. Cosby's lawyers denied the allegations. Gloria Ardred, lawyer for the woman known as Jane Doe No. 1, said in a statement, It is very difficult for a person who alleges that she is a victim to understand that there are arbitrary time periods set by law, and that if allegations are not reported within that time period, that it will be too late for a prosecutor to pursue them, even if a prosecutor believes that there is sufficient evidence to prove that case beyond a reasonable doubt. Goins' lawyer, Spencer Coven, acknowledged the disappointment but vowed to carry with their civil suit. Coven said in a statement, we recognize that the bar for criminal pr- uh, prosecution, which is proving guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, is extremely high. With the L.A. allegations falling short, Cosby will likely only be prosecuted for one case of sexual assault out of almost 60 allegations, and it's the case that led Cosby to be arrested last week at his Pennsylvania home. The statute of limitations has not yet run out in Pennsylvania, where the entertainer has been charged with aggravated indecent assault of Andrea Constant in 2004, where she was director of operations for Temple University's women's basketball team. The alleged incident took place in the comedian's home. Constant said Cosby first drugged, then sexually assaulted her. Cosby's legal team called the case unjustified. Showtime's popular comedy starring Don Cheetah, House of Lies, is set to become the first American scripted series to film in Cuba since relations normalize. The dark comedy will film its fifth season finale on the island over the next week, Deadline reports, and will be directed by the series creator Matthew Carnahan. In the series, Cheetah plays a cunning management consultant and head of Con and Associates who makes a bid with the help of big-name clients. The show also stars Kristen Bell. Ben Schwartz, and Josh Lawson. Variety confirmed the upcoming Cuba-based shoot falls in line with the U.S. Department of Treasury pursuant to an Office of Foreign Assets control license. Reports note other note-scripted U.S. television shows included Discovery Reality Series Cuban Chrome and TBS's Conan. Uh, Academy Award nominee Cheetah reportedly said in a statement, Marty and the Pod have traveled the world to land clients, but this historic trip to Cuba is definitely Khan and Associates' biggest and wildest adventure yet. It's sure to be one for the record books, for both our characters and for our cast and crew. We're grateful for short Showtime, our production team, and everyone who has worked diligently to make this trip happen. The fifth season of House of Lies guest stars will include the likes of Wanda Sykes, Keegan-Michael Key, Ken Marino, Malcolm Jawal Warner, John Cho, Donald Faison, and Nikki Whelan. Activist and rapper Killer Mike of Run the Jewels appeared on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert Wednesday night, saying a lot of white people are choosing to be ignorant about how bad things are for blacks and working class people in the United States. 
He told Colbert, if white people are just now discovering that it's bad for black or working class people in America, they're a lot more blind than I thought. They're a lot more choosing to be ignorant than I thought. The same problems that we're discussing today, we discussed in 1990, 1980, 1970, and 1960. Colbert asked, speaking for all white people, what can we do to bridge the gap between the communities of color? The rapper said, I speak at colleges. We speak at, I, when I speak at black colleges and white colleges, the message that I speak to white kids is get outside the college environment, find a child who's marginal and or doing exceptional in school that is a minority, doesn't look like you, help that child articulate into college. Teach them to the path you were taught to help them become a successful human being. Killer Mike, born Michael Render, also talked about the origin of his stage name and why he's supporting Bernie Sanders for president. The rapper said, I didn't name myself. I actually would have liked Bugatti Mike or Ferrari guy. I rapped against a kid as a kid, and I rapped against him really well, and then seven or eight other guys and said, that's kids a killer. Killer Mike, who will perform with his group again this year at the popular music festival Coachella, talked passionately about the upcoming presidential election and explained why he's supporting Democratic candidate Bernie Sanders, a self-proclaimed Democrat socialist from Vermont. He said Bernie Sanders is the only politician who has consistently for 50 years taken that social justice platform into politics. Right now, we have an opportunity to elect someone who is directly out of the philosophy of Dr. Martin Luther King's nonviolence. We can directly elect someone that cares about poor people, cares about women, gays, black rights, cares about the lives that don't look like his. This opportunity in history is not going to come in another 20 years. The BBC says its plans to air a travel docuseries called The Real Marigold Hotel, which is inspired by the 2012 blockbuster film the Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. Set to premiere late this month, the reality show will document in three hour-long episodes the adventures of eight famous senior citizens as they head to India for three weeks to see if they would consider spending their golden years retiring to the other side of the world, the news release said. The small screen cast includes actresses Miriam Marigolds, dancer Wayne Sleep, actor Sylvester McCoy, comedian Roy Walker, chef Rosemary Shagra, darts champion Bobby George, singer Pally Belay, and former newsreader Jim Lemming. Um, a synopsis said, in 2016, BBT, BBC Two will be tackling a number of contemporary issues from the black economy to low pay with lively entertainment new programs with real purpose. BBC Two uh, controller Kim Schillinglaw said in a statement Thursday, I'm delighted to be kicking off with this warm and very funny experiment examining how we spend our older years. With a terrific lineup of characters, the Real Marigold Hotel is both entertaining and incredibly moving and raises some big questions about the way we live in the latter part of our lives. The movie, which was followed by a 2015 sequel, starred Dame Mar Maggie Smith, Judy Dench, Penelope Wilton, Tom Wilkerson, and Bill Nighy. It was about financially strapped British pen pensioners who start new lives in India and form a new family in a deceptively advertised inn. The Man Without Fear, Daredevil, will be protecting the streets of Hell's Kitchen once again in March, according to a new teaser trailer released by Netflix Thursday. The Season 2 teaser depicts a gothic-looking church filled with ceiling paintings that highlights key moments from the superhero's drama's first season, including lawyer uh, Matt Murdock, Daredevil, played by Charlie Cox, taking on crime boss Wilson Fisk, a.k.a. Kingpin, along with his legal team Foggy Nelson, played by Eden Henson, and Karen Page, played by Deborah Ann Wool. Uh, Murdoch is heard saying in a voice to his priest, Father Lantum, played by Peter McRoby, Father, why do I still feel guilty? Lantum responds, guilt can be a good thing. It's a soul calls to action, the indication that your work is not yet finished. The clip ends with the church's windows being shattered by bullet fire, indicating the arrival of an anti-hero newcomer, Frank Castle, a.k.a. The Punisher, played by John Berthenau. Also scheduled to make an appearance in Season 2 is Daredevil's love interest, the assassin Elektra, played by L.D. Young. Khloe Kardashian says a strange husband, Lamar Odom, is continuing to improve. The 31-year-old reality star gave an update on the 36-year-old former NBA player at a Television Critics Association panel for a forthcoming FYI series, Cocktails with Chloe. She told reporters, I'm just there to support and care for him, but he's doing amazing. I'm so proud of the strength that he has to fight this battle. That his, that's his battle, and I'm so grateful for everybody's love and concern because I do think it's coming from a good place. Odom remained hospitalized after being discovered discovered unconscious in the legal Las Vegas brothel in October. Kardashian has been by his side since, even calling off their wedding 
or divorce and confirmed the situation will come up on her new television series. She said, definitely because it's such a con- uh, conversational show, it has come up because it's my life. It happened when we've been doing test shows. It, it's happened that I've just been very conversational with that, but I'm not going to force it. It's been flowing. Sources told people Odom will move from Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles to a live-in rehabilitation center. The insider said the former NBA player is making progress and will continue to receive amazing therapy at the new facility. Despite being panned by critics, Adam Sandler's latest comedy, The Ridiculous Six, has become the most watched new release in Netflix history. The film, a Netflix exclusive that launched on the streaming service on December 11th, currently holds a zero rating on review aggregator site Rotten Tomatoes. The low scores, however, have not kept audiences away, according to Netflix's chief content officer, Ted Sarandos. Sarandos set to Entertainment Weekly Wednesday during the Consumers Electronics Show in Las Vegas. The Ridiculous Six, by the way of example, in the first 30 days on Netflix, it's been the most watched movie in the history of Netflix. He continued by saying he also enjoyed a spot at number one in every territory we operate in, and in many of them it's still number one. Netflix admits that the high streaming numbers seen for The Ridiculous Six includes the company's original film division and licensed movie titles that appear on their service. The Ridiculous Six is the only the first of four films that Sandler signed on for in his new deal with the streaming giant. Kelly Kuko was quickly to clarify that she and co- and fellow Big Bang Theory co-star Johnny Galecki are still not dating after the 2016 People's Choice Awards on Wednesday. The 30-year-old actress declared as much on Instagram after she and the 40-year-old actor were casually affectionate at the annual's awards ceremony. Kuko and Galecki were spotted holding hands in their seats and cozied up against for photo uh, Backstage, She wrote, thank you for the at People Choice Awards. Look how happy we are at Big Bang Theory underscore CBS season nine. Hashtag my date. Hashtag not dating. Galecki also shared a Snapchat uh, with the actress writing the beggar and the beauty. Hashtag backstage. Hashtag people's choice. Google and Galecki co-star as Penny and Leonard on CBS sitcom The Big Bang Theory and secretly dated from 2008 to 2010. The actress split from husband Ryan Sweeting in September and denied she and Galecki are back together the next month. Madman actress Christina Hendricks has joined the cast of the upcoming film Bad Santa 2. A deadline report reveals that Hendricks, known for her role on AMC's Mad Men, will join the sequel to the 2003 Christmas-themed comedy. She's set to portray a new character who serves as the head of a charitable organization. Hendricks will join fellow newcomer Kathy Bates as well as Tony Cox, Brett Kelly and star Billy Bob Thornton who returned from the from the original Bad Santa. Broad, St- Broad Green Productions has set a November 23rd release date. The studio is set to fund and produce the film along with Miramax. Emma Stone may grab the lead in the upcoming live-action Disney flick, Cruella. The 27-year-old Aloha actress is in early negotiations for the role of the notorious fashion-obsessed villa, villain Cruella de Vil for the still direct list film, Hollywood Reporter says. Production is reportedly planned to begin this year. The upcoming film follows the release of 2014's Maleficent, which reimagined characters featured in a 19... 19- 59 classic Disney film Sleeping Beauty and starred Angelina Jolie. Corella expects to tell the story of the famously treacherous character's origin is being written by Kelly Marshall while screenwriter Aline Brosh McKenna helped develop an early version of the script, the reporter notes. The 1961 original 101 Dalmatians, DeVille was portrayed as a character obsessed with choice first, willing to hire burglars to steal 101 puppies from a modest couple to get her wish. The over-the-top role was first played in a live-action movie by Glenn Close. In a recent interview, fellow actress Jennifer Lawrence described Emma Stone as very theater and passionate about her career. Speaking with Glamour magazine, Lawrence and said Stone has never had a bad thought about anybody in her life and expressed how she and the Birdman actress recently stayed up until like 6 in the morning talking about deciding to become actresses the other night. We both were just like, I just knew it. Stone will hit the big screen again in La La Land opposite Ryan Gosling. The film is set for a January 15th release. Within 20 days since its theatrical release, Star Wars The Force Awakens has become the highest grossing film of all time at the U.S. box office. The wildly popular Disney-owned film starring Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, Adam Driver, and Mark Hamill, among others, has earned more than the former domestic record holder James Cameron's Avatar, which collected $760.5 million in 2009. Actual figures from The Force Awakens Hall at the American box office are expected to be released on Friday. 
Disney released a statement via StarWars.com thanking fans for their continued support. It said, uh, We feel fan support here and it drives us every day and will continue to in the very big future of Star Wars. There has indeed been an awakening and it's all thanks to you. In addition to its most recent record, the seventh installment of the Star Wars franchise, which released, which was released in theaters December 17th, also holds the record for the biggest opening day in the United States at $119.1 million, the biggest opening weekend at the U.S. box office at $247.96 million, and the biggest IMAX opening in the United States in the United States box office at $30.1 million. The Force Awakens is also the fastest film to earn $1 billion at the global box office. Despite being plenty of domestic records, the J.J. Abrams helm sci-fi adventure has yet to knock Cameron's avatar from global box office domination, although it is in the running at $1.6 billion thus far. The film is currently the fourth highest grossing movie worldwide before opening in China on January 9th. Carrie Russell and boyfriend Matthew Rides are, ex- are reportedly expecting their first child. Sources told People Magazine the 39-year-old American actress and 41-year-old Welsh actor are thrilled about Russell's pregnancy. An insider told Us Weekly Carrie is more than four months along. It's so exciting for them. Another source added the couple have yet to comment on the reports. Russell and Rides co-star as Elizabeth and Philip Jennings on FX's series The Americans and went public with their relationship in April 2014. The actress is already mother to eight-year-old son River and four-year-old daughter Willa with ex-husband Shane Dreary. Russell told Parade Magazine in 2013, I like working hard, but my life outside of my career is equally important to me. You instantly become less selfish when you're a mother. You can't be the biggest person in the world anymore. They are. It really grounds you. The Americans premiered in 2013 and will return for a fourth season in March. And a passing to report, Emmy and Golden Globe winning actor Pat Harrington Jr. has died after a battle with Alzheimer's disease. His family announced he was 86. A former member of Steve Allen's TV comedy troupe The Men on the Street, along with Don Knotts and Tom Poston, Harrington is perhaps best known for playing flirty Indianapolis building superintendent Dwayne Schneider on the sitcom One Day at a Time, which co-starred Bonnie Franklin and Valerie Bertinelli. His other credits include Make Room for Daddy, The Bing Crosby Show, The Man from Uncle, F Troop, The King of Queens, and Hot in, in Cleveland. Bertinelli captioned an old photo of her with the actor that she posted on social media Thursday. He always made me laugh. Harrington Jr. was 86 years old. Music superstar Janet Jackson is denying media reports she claiming she is battling throat cancer. Jackson last month postponed dates on her unbreakable concert tour so she could deal with an undisclosed illness. Dodged by rumors she is facing a serious health crisis, the Grammy Award winner took to Twitter Wednesday to set the record straight. She tweeted, The rumors are untrue. I do not have cancer. I'm recovering. My doctors have approved my concerts at schedule in Europe. And as I promised, the postponed shows will be rescheduled. Thank you for your prayers and love. The estate of Michael Jackson and Sony Le- Legacy Recordings say they will release exclusive CD, DVD, and CD Blu-ray editions of Jackson's 1979 album Off the Wall on February 26. The package will include the original version of the album bundled with the new documentary Michael Jackson's Journey from Motown to Off the Wall. Directed by Spike Lee, the documentary will have its world premiere at the Sundance Film Festival on January 24th and its television debut on Showtime on February 5th. Interviewed in the movie are Lee Daniels, The Weeknd, for Bell Williams, Misty Copeland, Kobe Bryant, Mark Ronson, John Legend, Questlove, Katherine Jackson, Joe Jackson, Marlon Jackson, Jackie Jackson, and L.A. Reid. Among the hits included on the album are Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, Rock With You, Working Day and Night, Getting on the Floor, Off the Wall, Girlfriend, She's Out of My Life, I Can't Help It, It's the Falling in Love, and Burning This Disco Down. Jackson died of a doctor-administrated accidental drug overdose in 2009 at the age of 50. Christina Aguilera and fiancé Matt Rutler shared a special kiss Wednesday. The 35-year-old singer posted a photo of herself embracing the 30-year-old guitarist in the pouring rain on Instagram, immediately evoking the notebook comparisons. The couple's smooch called to mind the famous rainy kiss Rachel McAdams and Ryan Gosling shared in the 2004 romantic drama. The pair played Ali Hamilton and Noah Callahoon in the film, which won Best Kiss at the 2005 MTV Movie Awards. Aguilera and Rutler met on the set of Burlesque in 2010 and got engaged age in February 2014. The couple share 60-month-old daughter Summer, Rain Rutler, and the singer is also mother to 7-year-old Max Bratman with ex-husband Jordan Bratman. She told People Magazine in February, I'm not in a rush to set a wedding day. Our love is secured enough that we don't need a wedding to prove our love and commitment. We're enjoying our daughter, our family, and our work for now. 
Singer Rihanna's seven teaser for her upcoming album Anti featured futuristic themes and her reception of one all important golden crown. Uploaded to t- uh, YouTube earlier this week, the minute long promo plays less as an advertisement and more as part of an ongoing narrative showing a darkly clad Rihanna roaming a mysterious hole before being directed to a room of gold inhabited by four accountants. After backing out of the room, Rihanna is finally met by the reclusive child, the stars in the six previous clips, and given a golden crown covered in braille, which dominates the artist's album cover. Rihanna wrote in the caption to her Instagram post promoting the new clip, is just beyond the vault. Discover room seven of the hashtag anti-diary at antidiary.com. Being the latest clip in a series of short videos in which Rihanna discovered a new hidden room, fans speculate whether the forthcoming eighth clip will finally give them access to the singer's long-awaited eighth record. Rihanna officially announced the upcoming album in early October, revealing also the record's artwork, which allegedly shows a young Rihanna holding a black balloon and wearing the gold crown. A splash of red can be seen covering the white background on which a poem written by Chloe Mitchell was written in Braille. And now let's look back at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 1946, Elvis Presley receives his first guitar. In competing versions of the story, what Elvis Presley really wanted for his birthday was a rifle or a bicycle, both fairly typical choices for a boy his age growing up on the outskirts of Tupelo, Mississippi. Instead, Elvis's highly protective mother, Gladys, she never let me out of her sight, Elvis would later say, took him to the Tupelo hardware store and bought a gift that would change the course of history, a $6.95 guitar. It was January 8, 1946, and Elvis Aaron Presley was 11 years old. The historical significance of putting a guitar into the hands of a young man who later helped define rock and roll is obvious. For Elvis himself, however, getting that guitar was just one more step in a thorough yet totally unplanned program of childhood musical development that prepared him perfectly to ignite a revolution 10 years later. Music surrounded the young Elvis Presley, musics of all types that would inform his later recordings and performance, from country, bluegrass, blues, and gospel, to Main Street pop, and even opera. Gladys Presley told stories of Elvis as a toddler jumping on her lap and running down the aisle of the First Assembly of God Church so that he could stand directly in front of the choir, singing along and imitating their movements. The local radio was dominated dominated by country and western music, which Elvis adored. And, as Peter Guronick, author of the definitive early Elvis biography, Last Train to Memphis, put it, Elvis absorbed the blues from the radio and the pervasive contact that a poor white family like the Presleys, always living on the edge of town and respectability, would necessarily have with blacks. Being within five years and 500 miles of one Another future greats, such as James Brown, Little Richard, Carl Perkins, Jerry Lee Lewis, and Sam Cooke, were being shaped by this same mix of musical influences, as well as by a culture in which listening to music generally meant participating in it too. The generation of musicians who would give birth to a whole new genre and subgenres of American music, not just rock and roll, but rockabilly, rhythm and blues, soul, and more. With his first guitar in hand, Elvis Presley took a key step towards joining that list of music greats on this day in music history in 1946. And as your entertainment report for Friday, January 8th, 2016, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back on Monday to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the enter report or on Instagram at the entertainment report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the entertainment report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app search for the entertainment report and it'll take you to the page everyone have a great weekend good night and god bless you all